He's got to take note. All right. Welcome back, guys. Man, Cardbeer, your lighting looks so good. <laughs> Isn't it just the best? Dude, it looks so good. It's funny because it's so simple. It's called three-point lighting. Yeah. So pretty much what we're doing is we're getting uh, a bit of backlight with a little bit of color on one side. It's pretty much hot and cold. So okay. we got on one side, warm on one side. Uh, I've got two other lights underneath, so it builds a bit of a kind of shadow. Right. I'm sorry, it, it builds a bit of a light from the back. Right. Uh, I'm still messing with it. Let's see. Maybe a couple I, more. I times. just bought uh I just bought a, a gimbal. We used it on the weekend. I don't know if you remember. That was good. But uh we I it has a light. Let me actually see if the light makes a difference just for fun. It does. It does, does it help? It does help. Is it better? Uh it's so you know what it is? It's a little bit too sharp. There, it's a little bit softer now. It's a little bit better, yeah. That better? Uh, make it a little bit brighter. Let's see what happens. Okay, so what's happening right now is from one side, you got the harsh light coming out from outside. It's yeah, cool. I can make it colder too. I can change the temperature of it. Of it. So go on and off. Turn on and off. It's off right now? It's off right now. It's off. Turn it on. See how much of a world of difference? <laughs> it's such a big difference. <laughs> so pretty much all I've done is because I've got multiple lights set up, it softens the shadows. Yeah. Then the shadows show up where they need to, right? People are going to hate me because now I it's on a crane, so like it's on an actual crane uh, camera. So it's not meant for like a studio light. So now after okay. seeing that, I know everyone that's watching this is going to be like, damn, you should have just left the light on. I say you should just leave the light on. Because now you just look weird to me. Like half your face is completely like two faced. You look like two faced to me. I might need the cranium. I might need it. I might need it. I'm gonna be distracted all. No, I all wonder there. if I can just plug it in and just have the light on. You can. I don't know. Have you ever done it with your phone, where you just take um? <coughs> oh man, I didn't think of that. I could just yeah, I could. <laughs> you, just... you just look like you know, like the scary movies. Yeah, that's so that's, pretty much that's the look. I ha that's the look you have right now. So you, you usually what happens is um, if you want to show somebody that's like evil, it's yeah. pretty much um, the lighting is going to go in from different areas, right? If you're showing like despair, scaredness, this and the other, the shadows are starting to come down versus right. up. And then usually superheroes are the ones that get the lighting from different angles to show their silhouette. Right. That makes sense. Anyways, that was a long montage about how your, your lighting's really good here. <laughs> We're going to work on yours. We're going to work I on know. it. I know. I'm, I'll buy a light eventually. All right, guys. So uh, I guess, yeah, welcome back to our second uh, live-ish because we record this and then I upload it later, but it is kind of a live anyways. Yeah. Uh, got a lot of good feedback from the first one saying people really enjoyed it. Um, they said they could connect with us more. Um, and we had comments. Like we haven't had comments before. So actually, no, we've had a couple comments. That's actually interesting because the thought is like, why would they want to listen to us about <laughs> topics? Why do our opinions matter? But it's really the thought process that might go behind it, right? Yeah, dude, I think about that all the time. Anytime I make a video, I'm like, why does it matter? Yeah. And I got people, people just like being entertained. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I don't have a beard. So I honestly, I feel a little bit naked. So it's funny. I saw your video yesterday about uh, your experience with Granada Free Kitchen. Yeah. And you came in completely clean shaved. I thought it was actually an old video and you started talking. And I'm like, you literally just came like within 24 hours. You're a completely different. Yeah, okay. I went home and then I was like, I was like, I haven't seen my face in a minute. And uh, you know what got me thinking? There was a guy at the, at the, at the Gurnana Free Kitchen. I don't know if you remember um, Harpal. Yep. Uh, he has a beard normally. Yep. And so one thing he said to me was like, he's like, you know, I shaved one day because I couldn't remember what I looked like. I was like, I don't remember what I look like. I, I was like, in my mind, yeah. <laughs> I woke up and I was like, let's get rid of it. You know what you should do is now is because you go completely clean again, show the process yeah. of going clean, and then just time lapse it over thirty days. Uh, it, you mean it growing? Yeah, I could. Yeah, it's funny because I shaved it right at the. I mean, towards the end of uh, November, right? So yeah. it doesn't have to. Be a lot of people are like, "Oh, you got rid of it, November? It's no, still November." I was like, I wasn't even paying attention to that. Yeah, no, we're already giving to a causes. <laughs> when we right. Need to causes. <laughs> we don't need a month dedicated to that. But exactly. the message is good. The message is always good. That's what we're yeah. looking at. That's, that's important. That's the most important thing. 
Cool. Sweet. So we have some we have some topics that we want to talk about on this week's uh, uh, live recording. Yep. Um, do you want to start with the first one? I want to start with Tesla. Me too. <laughs> and I want to start with Tesla is because you've been showing me these videos of people going crazy on Twitter online, just lining up just to view the truck. And this truck in person actually looks so cool. It's it's cool to see frame of reference because the last time I seen it was when Elon Musk threw a cannonball at the window and it completely shattered. Yeah, the, the metal ball. Yeah, and that actually just generated more popularity for it. And now you see the frame of reference of people walking around this truck and you see the actual size and masses of it. And I'm right. just thinking, this thing looks like a tank. I actually just... It looks, it looks so cool. Dude, it's funny. I just want to touch on something you said. Um, the the metal ball that he threw, you know how you said it like generated more popularity for the car? Yep. For whatever reason... Um, Steve, I can't remember exactly what it was, but Steve Jobs, I think it was a comp internet failure. So Steve Jobs was doing an announcement for one of the Apple products. Yeah. And uh, I think the internet was really slow. So he had everyone in the room shut off their Wi-Fi, their MiFi stations or whatever they called them. Yeah. But that moment is uh, is like, like a really important moment for Apple because uh, not really important, but it's more like, uh, like it's remembered because of that. Yeah. And so the metal ball is just like the same thing. It's, you know, they, they were trying to say like this glass won't break, boom, it breaks, which is not a good thing. Cause they're trying to demo the product, yep. but that ended up being good advertising for the company. Like everyone heard about this failure on stage. Um, so it kind of goes back to like the whole, you know, controversy or like, um, like it helps, you know what I mean? Like any, somehow, any publicity is good publicity, yeah. right? Somehow failure of, trying to show how good the product is, it actually makes more viral marketing. It was the same thing with Starbucks, how people misspell names all the time. And then what happens? Yes. You take a picture, you throw it on IG or Facebook, and then people laugh about it. And then you have, you have these top 10 lists, top 25 lists. I said, this is what my name was, and this is what came out. Yeah, and then there's a free market. You have the cup and literally all these, yeah. uh, whatever, Instagram stories and Snapchats and all this. Uh, so and then you have like is, the Starbucks logo in the background on the cup everywhere. So yeah, it's like free marketing, man. That's crazy. And it's it's um it's not even just about the free marketing portion. It's actually getting people uh in tune with what they might not really want to go get. Mm -hmm. I've had this where I'll wake up in the morning and I'll see a billboard. They'll show Tim Hortons or McDonald's, and they'll show like a nice muffin breaking in half. The the raspberry or blueberry um compote coming out and the steam is coming out. I'm like. I want a muffin now. Yeah. I don't know why I want a muffin, but I'm like, I'm hungry for a muffin. The steam does it, right? The little, uh, whatever, yeah, the water it's so vapor. Cartoon. Like the it water vapor happen. and stuff. Yeah. It's pure cartoons. That it's it's probably some sort of uh, CGI. But yeah, going going back to the Cybertruck, uh, you know, I think uh, it's so interesting because the, you know, I spend a, a decent amount of time on Twitter. That's where I get all my news. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like prior to this launch, it was like the world was very divided. Like literally I would comment something about the Cybertruck and half the responses would be like, it's ugly. It looks terrible. No one's going to want it. And then the other half like, wow, it's so revolutionary. It's innovation. It's, it's exemplary for a truck. Yeah. So it was, it was so divisive. Um, and I think that debate's been settled because now when you go on, on Twitter and you see these lineups, it reminds, it's reminiscent of um, iPhone when they first came out, you know how there was lineups like, down the block yeah 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 it's kind of the same thing like some of these videos i'm watching it's like lineups around the store in a mall around the block uh oh. and people are just lined up to see it they can't even buy it yet nope nowhere near touching it and you know what there's such a long wait list for the people that put in a hundred dollars so long you gotta overcome that to actually be one of the people in line to go and buy this yeah. product so people are lining up just to see it and then they're being told like hey you're probably not going to get this for the next maybe a year and a half to three years, which okay. is which is what the expected uh, timelines are for these. Uh, so here, here, I got a thought. How yeah. much of a resale value do you think is going to happen of these trucks when people start buying them? Do you think they'll be able to 3x their money just off the Yo, truck? It's so, it's so funny you say that because Tesla issued an, uh, I don't know if it was like an announcement, but like an actual letter they sent out saying you're not allowed to resell this vehicle. Um, but I, and again, I think they're trying to make it so that it doesn't drive up the cost, mm -hmm. but in a free marketplace, you have to let that happen. 
like yeah, you know, with main thing, like if uh, you buy something someone shouldn't be able to tell you like you can't sell the thing that you bought i don't think that's right yeah um but uh i again i don't i didn't go into detail whether or not they changed that but that was the f- first thing was like you cannot resell this car yeah uh, but i yeah for sure there's gonna be another marketplace for it 100 yeah. percent, dude if in if in you know dubai or saudi arabia they pay millions of dollars for license plate numbers someone's gonna pay three four times for to be a early adopter of the cyber truck they'll they'll find they'll definitely find a way let's go into the technology of the truck yeah how do you think that's going to revolutionize everything dude i could talk about this for hours um a cool feature is obviously the steel body um yep. the, the fact that it was bulletproof um you i don't know if you can google this while i'm while i'm chatting but uh they uh elon was saying they uh, it was a tommy gun i think it was he unloaded a round of bullets from a tommy gun and it, yep. it leaves the mark on the on the steel but it never penetrates now, any gun. other car tommy gun that just sounds hilarious i, I think it's called the tommy gun I don't know. yeah but, but any, <laughs> any other car like those bullets are going through but for the the tommy truck, gun. tesla shot a tommy gun at cybertruck and this was exactly a month ago yeah. So, and that, and that gun, you could see the marks It leaves like proper indents. And then Joe Rogan did an episode with Elon and he shot up uh, an arrow at it, like a bow yeah. and arrow, like a crossbow, yeah. I think it was. And he, it and, it, and it sparked. Huh? Did it pierce the metal? No, no, it sparked like a little <laughs> lit up and then nothing. It was just like a little scratch on the, on the cyber truck. But again, that in any other truck, any other car it's going through, like it's cutting, it's cutting through the metal. So yeah. again, that's a nice to have feature. Obviously, the the windshield's nice. It's got the one big windshield wiper, which people are always going crazy about. But I think the I think the best part about any Tesla vehicle is the the full self driving. Um, yeah. Which uh, which yeah, it just frees up time. Like you know, you know, if you're driving a lot, you're that's an hour, two hours every day for like a good portion of the population. If the car does that for you you've now opened up another hour, two hours of your time in your life. So yeah, Tesla's actually done a good job with collecting all the data from all the hundreds of thousands of millions of cars and all the, I don't know if they've gotten to a billion miles yet around the globe, but they have all that data, which other companies just do not have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're so far ahead. You have a question for you. Do you like the Cybertruck? I like the Cybertruck. Actually in the beginning, I didn't uh, because I was just like, oh, this kind of reminds me of, when people started going crazy for the Hummer. Right. And the more I look at it and the more I think about the technology aspect of it, I'm thinking what else is going to touch this truck? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so different. There's other vehicles out there. There's other companies that are doing it, but they're just doing it for the purpose of tax credits and not losing their licenses for, I guess, manufacturing vehicles because they have to go a certain amount of uh, green efficiency. Right. That's yeah. That's the other other thing with uh, Tesla in this uh, in the EV business is that every not every I wouldn't say every but most other car manufacturers, legacy car manufacturers, they're losing money to make electric vehicles. Yep. I can't remember what the exact numbers are, but Ford's losing money when they sell an electric vehicle. Um, it was it was, I like, think it was I think Lucid, Lucid is like a hundred and fifty thousand plus that they lose per car. Yes. I think it was Lucid Air and what's the other one? It starts with a P, I think um uh polestar yeah i think it was lucid or polestar they're losing three hundred thousand dollars per vehicle that's i think being that's out. i think that's lucid that's insane uh, so just a crazy and i think i'm pretty sure legacy like i'm pretty sure ford the lightning models i'm sure they're losing money there too like they have to. i don't see any know, other way around it and then tesla's the only one that's being that's able to do it profitably um and they're the only ones that can have enough demand to scale and they're Keep built on the ground facilities. up, right? Their entire yeah. manufacturing plants are built for that purpose, which these other like dinosaur companies, I I should say. Exactly. Yeah. They're just not, they're not up right. to par. Yo, what's cool, I, and, and I'll share this and we can go into the next thing after, but what's really cool about the way Tesla works, someone, I, I don't know where I was reading this, but someone, I don't know if they asked Elon, but they kind of commented on it. They're like, they said something about like, oh, Tesla, you know, once they figured out their manufacturing, they can just copy and paste, mm-hmm. right? They could just take the idea and then start one in another city, in another state, in another country. Yep. And then Elon, what a nutcase, man. That guy's something else. Um, he said, why would we copy and paste if we could just refine the process and make it better than it was in the 
the first one. It's yep. like so true. But but again, the simple mind's like, yeah, just this idea works, copy and paste. But that's exactly how legacy dies, right? Because yes, they don't look at ways to improve. But he's like, oh, why would we, you know, if I can make this process 10% better in the next factory, why not make those changes? Yeah. The average person doesn't think like that. And it's just, I was just so blown away. It's such a little thing too, right? I mean, little to us, he probably spends all day. It's a big deal, but he's like, yeah, why would I, he's like copy and pasting is the worst thing you could do. It's like, yeah, it's guy. called R&D, man. Rip off and duplicate. This guy, man, this guy's something else, man. You Whatever want, he's huh? doing, man. I know they raised some money for uh, Neuralink. They're, I think they raised some money for uh, Starlink, the satellites. and Starlink, yeah, they've done that too. Wherever he, man, any company that goes public that has Elon involved, I'm throwing money in it. You have to. You got, yeah. there's, a, there's a book called The One with uh, Peter Thiel wrote that book. Yeah. And they talked about the genius of Elon and the handful of, like Peter Thiel and a handful of people. Yeah. About vertical integration versus horizontal. horizontal. He's like, why would I ever want to be horizontal? Like Amazon and Alibaba, when he's yeah. like, I could just be vertical and make it. So yeah. now all these other companies are going electric because of him. Amazon has thrown their money into it. Apple has thrown into their money into it. And it's all, actually all these tech companies and the money uh, companies that are making billions of dollars and trillions of dollars versus the actual car manufacturing companies. Yeah. Which I'm thinking if the technology companies are doing it, then they're way ahead of the game. 100%. And again, just the thoughts that uh, these companies are having are just so different, man. I just like, I can't like, there's so many, like I could sit here and talk for an hour, but like, yeah. Even full self-driving, I, I think it was Elon that tweeted this. He said, he said, cars are a depreciation, a depreciating asset or a liability, right? That's what a liability is. And he's like, but full self-driving cars will actually become an asset because now when you go somewhere, your car doesn't have to sit there, do nothing. It's going to drive around and because it can uh, drive itself, it's going to go and do ride share, things like Uber. It's going to take passengers places. So now your car is working for you and making you money. Yeah, so like, now we don't want just, to pay $20 an hour for parking in Vancouver. <laughs> you save money on parking. The car is going to earn you money because it's yeah. dropping people off and picking people up. Yeah. So it's like, dude, just the, yeah, man. <laughs> you know, I'm, like a fan, I'm like a geeky fanboy right now. These are the these are the thoughts that you got to think about of what the technology can actually do for you. Because most people, like, I would want to make money off my car. I don't know if I would ever want to off of one of them, but it'd be cool yeah. to have a fleet of cars. And just let exactly. them roll them out all day. Long. Well, that's the thing. If you're if now the car's making you money, you could once you make the money, you could roll it into another car. Then that just makes you more and more money. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Crazy yeah. exponential growth. Anyway, right? anyways, man, this is a... <laughs> dude. This is why I think you should look at Bitcoin. We talked about this last time. I know. I still have to watch the video because, like, know. if you play the technology out long enough time horizons, like it changes the fabric of society, and it's hard for us to understand that unless you actually think about it, but. Uh, Jeff Booth, which I've been trying to egg you on on getting on the show, is like he's the guy that asks that question and like literally learns about this technology. Yeah, makes sense. So cool, but uh, cool. Yeah, man, I want one. You want to talk about <laughs> I want a Cybertruck. <laughs> I think we should all get one. How much are they? What's the retail? Do you have an idea? I think the actual launch and delivery date is the thirtieth, so I don't think it's announced until then. Um, but my guess is between 80 and 100. Probably okay. not 80. If they did 80, that'd be insane. But between 80 and 100. So it's like your average luxury car. Like, yeah, I would say it's, it would be competitive with the truck category, I think. Yes, it would be. Has to be. Yeah. They're trying to convince that that's their, uh, that's the target, right? That's the target group that they're going after. Yeah. Um, they can talk about shopping and price points. I want to talk about Black Friday. Yeah. 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 Let's talk about Black Friday. Let's Inflation talk about Black Friday. is up. Interest rates are up. Black Friday, up. <laughs> Black Friday somehow has inched their way by posting up, I think, 7 to 11% more than the previous year for sales, which last right. year was like all time lows for everything. Right. Dude, this year has been the craziest year because all early on, quarter one, quarter two, all we heard was inflation, high interest rates, recession, slow economy. But literally, we get a holiday like Black Friday and Cyber Monday. And spending is up year over year as inflation comes down. And even Cyber Monday is at, I think, a 12.5 or $13 billion just from people sitting at home clicking right. away. That's insane. Right. So this just actually gets me to think, did people actually just hold on to all their money in the beginning of the year because it was so expensive? 
And now when all the rates have been slashed by 50 to 70%, they're going out just paying because it's so much cheaper. And they, they're trying to, I guess, release their frustration of not doing anything all year long and just spending it all now. Spending, spending it. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, it, it, it could be right. Like, um, like it's hard to know, like macro econ so complex. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to know where, where all this money is coming from, but you know, it has to be, sent up. It has to be stored somewhere. Yeah. So, so again, it, there's two sides of it and probably a combination of both, but consumers are smarter than they used to be. Yeah. Like now it's like everything's telegraphed, right. With the internet and the way uh, information spread. So when the pandemic hit, everyone started saving because it was telegraphed. Like we're shutting down, save your money. So everyone yeah. went into conservation mode. So that money was pent up and built over time yeah. um, and savings were growing. And then, you know, COVID ended or they declared that it was over and people went out and started spending money. Mm -hmm. um, one other thing, I don't know if I sent it to you, but like, uh, I think it was this past week, um, America hit a record for the most amount of flights uh, taken in one day. Um, and they're like, you see this like little digital chart where there's like planes everywhere. Canada's like nothing, but like America just covered. It's yeah. Insane. And this was for, um, I guess, American Thanksgiving. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's what it was. Yeah. Insane. You know what? There's huh? actually really cheap flights right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think they're, you know, I mean, flights are hitting some level of like uh, disinflation to maybe even some sort of deflation, right? Like the prices of flying around is coming down quite a bit. You know, also yeah, so think, people are spending, man. People have money. Yeah. Yeah. I want to, I want to touch on the Crazy. flight. Thing. I think, I don't think there's an inverse effect of spending and ticket prices for airlines coming down. I think what's happening is they'll slightly reduce the price of a ticket, but they'll yeah. start doing add-ons. Insurance. Yeah, like your suitcase. and Suitcase, baggage carry the, on. The, the flare model. Yeah. And now they started charging for food. They'll charge you. $15 for a packet of cheese or peanuts. Yo, this is why I love Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it. So that's the flight map. That's USA. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Yesterday, yesterday, this is a, uh, I think, I think I took a screenshot like a couple days ago, but it said it was the busiest day ever at airports in the U S with the TSA reporting 2,884,000 people screened. That's a, uh... A lot of people traveling. A lot of people traveling. <laughs> That's a lot of planes in there. So yeah, man, are we in a recession? Is the economy going to slow? Are these high interest rates enough to stop inflation? Or I don't know, such a confusing time. <laughs> it's confusing to me because I'm like, how are people spending all this money? And yet they're complaining about house prices and gas prices. And the I don't know. Everyone I talk to is like, people are still spending money. You have I talked to. to a mortgage broker this morning for like, uh, I don't know, like 20, 30 minutes. And he was saying, yeah, man. He's like, it just got busy out of nowhere. Yep. Yep. I don't know. I honestly don't know what to think anymore. I'm just like, all right, just got to hedge uh, my investments a little bit, but just keep, just let it ride, you know? Yeah. Do you think these Black Friday sales are help, like polluting the world a little bit more? Because all this money is being spent on pretty much fast fashion nowadays. Nothing's of quality. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know the longevity of a lot of these pieces of clothing because a lot of it is um, synthetic fibers. It's not, mm -hmm. it's not radical fibers. Mm -hmm. So it can't really be good for our skins. It's not good for the planet. Mm -hmm. How sustainable do you think that's going to be? Um, I think there's a, you know, I think there's, it's not sustainable, right? Like oh. um, there's a lot of documentaries on this. I know there's like entire industries being founded on <clears throat> doing the opposite of fast fashion, which is making high quality materials that last a long time. Yep. So, I mean, I think it's a problem. Like, again, every solution creates a problem. But we, we always think it's companies, right? We want to blame Zara and H&M for fast fashion. But it's like, no, we're the problems because yeah. we're the ones buying this stuff. And every few months, we want to discard clothing and just go buy another one. Yes. But we got, it's like, we got to change how we spend money. We got to look for quality. We got to do business with companies that sell quality products that last a long time. That right? is because that we, one, article of, uh, one article of clothing is just cheap enough to wear mm -hmm. it once. To be able to just discard it the following day right i see that right. a lot and even just like materials right like uh fast fashion has a tendency to use lower quality materials that uh bleed uh into your skin like the dyes bleed into your skin they yep. get absorbed right 
uh, one of my good friends, South Asian Strong, this is like, a, I guess it's a subtle shout out to him, but um, he's really big on this. Like he's all about health. So fitness, of course, weights, all that. But then even like clothing material, like he's so particular. Yeah. Like he's like, oh, that's polyester or I won't buy it. I'm like, why? Mm-hmm. He's like, the dyes will bleed into your, or they'll, you know, they'll get absorbed by your skin and yep. it's just not healthy for you. So I'm the same way. It's like micro, uh, it's like micro fibers just falling off or rubbing off and it's going mm-hmm. out. like it's being absorbed into your skin as soon as we start warming up or start sweating our pores open up and mm-hmm. those micro kind of um synthetic fibers mm-hmm. actually just go into our bodies mm-hmm. and the only way to remove them is to take a cold shower because i had a friend that worked in uh the fiberglass industry mm-hmm. and he would have to take a cold shower at the end of every single shift mm-hmm. because if he took it warm then the fiberglass would just get sucked into his body it would cause right. rash skin irritation right right so, and we're doing this with clothing like we're per- yeah. like we, we with everything know. right i mean we're our constant pursuit for cheaper prices and lower price goods and lower quality like we're settling for lower quality yep but the problem is what we give up is you know uh long-term health benefits of quality products that you put on your skin whether it's like makeup or or uh, lotions or whatever right yeah. So yeah, I mean, part of that is our sentiment. And I think the best way to kind of challenge that is to be advocates for our what we believe to be true, right? We go if I think if we just start shopping quality products for ourselves, we'll, we'll encourage other people to do that. And that's I think that's the best way forward. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is fashion. this is your wheelhouse because you know, fashion's your thing. I'm all about style, man. Fashion, <laughs> I just care less about. I'd rather spend money on high ticket items. Yeah. Well, you, you happen to do both. Like you're, you have fashion, but you also buy quality stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Cause I know so, a lot of the stuff's going to last longer. Right. Right. Especially dude, jackets you, and jeans. Dude, you told me you were going to be my stylist. You haven't come and checked out my closet yet. Oh, you know what? That's right. We, I did visit your house like once or twice and I never, we never went through it. We should have. Hey, it would have been good for Black Friday with the amount of sales that were happening. I, man, I was I was tempted. I was like, I don't need anything. I think uh, on Twitter, same yeah. day, someone's like, um, what should I buy today? I'm like, you know, if you're asking, you probably don't need anything. Save you your money. You really don't need anything. Yeah. Save your money. I did buy. Actually, it's funny because I did buy a crane. The gimbal? The gimbal. Very and I made a network out of it too. Very good investment. We were able to use it for our last pod. Yeah. Yo, you want to talk about that a little bit? The Green Onyx Free Kitchen? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, let's talk. Let's talk about that. Um, so, I got introduced to it from you. Yep. And then uh, Sunday we went volunteering, right? Super early in the morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a shared kitchen. It's it's a kitchen at the Gordwara that's been uh, grown a little bit bigger in size, mm-hmm. but literally volunteers come before they start their day at work. Before they get their day started, mm-hmm. they help prepare the food, cook it. Uh, um, uh, package it all up and then load it up on the truck and then they just go on their merry way for work for 9 a.m mm-hmm. and then there's a second crew which will just bring the truck downtown and there will be family and other volunteer members like a second group of people to help and then we just uh we distribute the food mm-hmm. and once the food is completely done we don't leave until all the food is done including the last drop right. of, of ja. once it's right. completely distributed everybody's had their fill Everything gets loaded up. We clean the area that we were in, leave it better than what it was, take it back to the Gurdwara, wash the dishes, and we see each other the following weekend. That's it. Yeah, it was a, it was a lot of fun. And what really surprised me mm-hmm. was how many people are that were new to Canada or the city, because there's some people from Toronto that moved to, to BC, yep. uh, and they didn't have like much of a network here. Um, they didn't know many people. And like, the Gurdwara is where they found uh, refuge, right? Like that's where they kind of met people that made them feel part of the community and helping out. The other thing that I really appreciated, because um, we were there and we we had the 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 honor of recording the events and uh, the the charity program. Oh, yeah. But what I what I really enjoyed was that they were telling us what shots to take. They're like, make sure you get this part. Make sure you get this part. Yeah. Like when we're loading, they're like, because you remember they loaded stuff on the truck. Yeah. And then we my camera was charging, so we never got to record that. Yeah. And he I can't remember who it was, but he came back and he's like, No, no, you have to get that part. He's like, that yeah. part's important. Yeah. So they took everything out of the truck. Yep. Got me to get my camera, started it up, and then loaded everything back on the truck just so I could record that piece. 
it's actually the excitement it's actually the excitement of uh showcasing something because i don't think anybody ever comes in and says hey we want to make like a mini documentary or we want to showcase your guys's um like specialty right and all of a sudden now you have uh you have these two guys come in like i volunteered like they know who i am so i volunteer there sometimes right now i'm like we want to record and like great like take us here take us there and move us around i was like no, this Yo, is so it was, good. dude. It was so mind blowing for me because I went in there thinking, like, you know, because you know, as a, I, I wouldn't say I'm like overly religious, but like I grew up in a, a religious household. So when I went there, I thought they were going to be very like closed off, like, you know, why are you recording? But they were like, no, come, like, get this, get this. Like I would, and yeah. they're like I was, they're like they're normal people. Like we're we're like talking about whatever, and like it didn't matter, you know. Yeah, yeah. But you know, in my mind, I was like, oh, I'm going to have to be like super proper, like hands together, like make sure I don't, they're like, no, you be you and like help yeah. showcase what we're doing here. And that was cool. Yeah. And you know what, to add to your point, when we were downtown, we met a couple of people that were outside the uh, kind of the religion faction that we're with, with Sikhi. There was mm-hmm. somebody that was Persian. There was somebody mm-hmm. that was like a, a North American, Canadian kind of Christian guy. Mm-hmm. And then there was somebody else that was from, uh, that was Iranian. Mm-hmm. I thought that was interesting. And our questions to them, well, my questions to them was, how did you get connected with us? Why don't you have something of your own or maybe something community work? A lot of them said that we didn't even know where to go. One guy said, I literally was sitting inside of a bus and I saw these guys in turbans, they were serving food. And the next time I came by just to see what they were doing. And I noticed that they were giving out free food. Mm-hmm. And he wanted to get involved, but because he went to these different places that were like, these are the restrictions or this is kind of the parameters you have to fit before mm-hmm. you can actually help the community. He was mm-hmm. thinking like, that's insane. Like you need, you need to follow some sort of criteria to help people. Right. And he, when they came here, he said they were just so welcome and they were so happy to know that another person is willing to actually contribute. Right. Yeah. Right? No, I, I love that. I talked to him a little bit too. And he was saying that, uh, what he say? He's like, he's like, I always knew homelessness was a problem here in Vancouver. And for the longest time, I thought I should do something about it and just never had the opportunity or didn't know how. And he's like, one day I was in the bus, I saw this stand and just came and started talking to them. Yeah. So you that know, was the cool. Thing is, yesterday, um, being Monday, the following day after we did serving, mm-hmm. we, um, we had a radiothon, a telethon for right. raising money for the new kitchen that's being down, that's being built downtown. And they actually hit their their big ultimate goal of no way. two million dollars. Wow. The goal was two million dollars to build it up within a couple of years, like five years maybe. And wow. we were like Gurunanak Free Kitchen, all the volunteers, all the efforts, um, you know, with God's blessing and grace, they were able to raise exactly two million and like some thousand dollars. Wow. Um, at the stroke of like eight eight PM last night insane insane congrats yeah. man. that's that's big that's yeah, big I, now that i've like been around you a lot and i've seen the kind of the sick uh sick key community is that what i call it sick, key yeah, community? sick community yeah the community um dude that people give a lot There's i didn't so know much. that i didn't, it was so been so sheltered from this but yeah I, they give so much it's crazy like you know i guess i guess you have to be exposed to it within yeah, i just wasn't time. exposed to it and depending on type of friends and workplaces that you're in, you might have some sort of initiative. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was looking at different numbers from different um, charts of how much money is being given and donated. And mm-hmm. I think the number dropped by like um, this morning, because I just got a newsletter in the email. I think it dropped by like a couple couple percent and people mm-hmm. are giving about 1.7% a year. Mm-hmm. Right. And in our community, what's... Um, it's not expected, like nobody should be forced or expected to give something that they necessarily might not have, but mm-hmm. it's called Dasvand. Dasvand is like 10% of your earnings. Right. Right. So our community really is heavily invested in just giving back and finding causes that they're going to be connected to. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was good to see. It was actually, a, a was really well. was that good? you would do it again. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And yeah, uh, I just have to find the time for it. But yeah, I, I kind of want to make time for this, you know? Yeah. There's Instead a couple of finding things. time. I got to make time. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, I realize I can easily just go on Saturday, Sunday morning, do the cooking between six and eight yeah. and then just get my day started. 
Yeah, totally. And you meet say, cool people, like the other thing is like you meet cool people too. Like you're oh, talking right. to like cool people. Yeah, yeah. Different new things. They're in the background. community. They're involved. One guy took a uh, uh, like literally rides a bike from Richmond to New Westminster yeah. every day. Like <laughs> I don't know, like thirty, like twenty kilometers or something. It was funny. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. I heard them talking about that. I was like, that's insane. But yeah, I was like, it's cool. <laughs> it's fun to be involved. Yeah, it's fun to be involved, and uh, no, it makes you it makes you like care about your community a little bit differently too, right? You have a different actually, lens. Yeah, yeah. you want to do good work. You want to spread good messages and contribute where you can. So, the realization yeah. that I got because you and me we were talking about how cold it was, and this was midday, and my thought was when I got up in the morning and my car was completely frozen. Mm -hmm. how are people surviving on the streets yeah it's that's, a real, that's a really sad reality and yeah you know just a little bit of effort makes a huge difference yeah yeah it is it's it's yeah i couldn't imagine like i was cold standing there giving out food as the heat from the food is warming me up and i'm complaining about it being cold and but yeah the people that are out there i you know i it, it, i had moments where i i thought Maybe I should record this, but then I didn't want to take away from the the work that we were doing and our guys were doing. Yeah, but that's a different documentary. I think the the homelessness problem in uh, Vancouver is quite sad, actually. Those are those are policies, and that's lawmakers, and that's government. They're mm -hmm. the ones that need to be uh, held accountable or, or responsible. Maybe mm -hmm. our system, maybe our own parenting styles have failed us. The school system failed us. Mm -hmm. But there's something. There's some sort of uh, gap that needs to be bridged. 100%. How it's going to get done, I think it's just going to come through conversation, right? And then I think so, just just seeing yeah. that, you know, I you know, I would hate to see people, anyone get into that position. Like, I know, like, well, I guess, I don't know who this is going to go to, but, um, you know, times do get tough. And, like, just remember, like, there's people that want to help and are willing to help. Yep. Um, and I think the the Sikh community, the Gurdwara, like, those are always places that you can go if you're struggling and whether it's mental health or food, you know, they're yeah. always welcome in, uh, in our community. So. Yeah. Fun fact, the golden temple in Amritsar, it's the largest free food kitchen in the world. They wow. serve something like a hundred thousand plus meals a day. Wow. Every single day. And they've been just been doing that for generations since our gurus um, laid the first foundation of uh, the Gurdwara. Wow. And now yeah. put this into perspective, every single Gurdwara has a longer system. So you can always just right. go there to get food, free food. Right. All right. Especially this winter, like, you know, as it gets cold, I really hope people have food and warmth. So yeah, cool. I want to change topics because since we're talking about food, something interesting. Uh let's talk about McDonald's. Let's talk about Mickey D's. Yo, you are but just before we go into McDonald's, you're a Segway king. You're crushing yeah. Segways. <laughs> No, because it was like we're talking about food, and no, no, I know no, like, I'm celebrating. I'm celebrating. I mean, it's... <laughs> we're, talking about, we're, we're we're talking about like homeless people and homelessness, and now yeah. it's um, it's interesting to see if, uh, Ray Kroc goes and turns this small kind of um burger chat yeah. into this multinational like gazillion dollar real estate and franchising licensing. This Brand empire, this I don't empire. even know. Like, yeah, it went from a food business to a real estate slash food business. It's and like he was just selling empire. milkshakes. He was selling milkshake. Um, or, yeah. That's all he was doing. Right. Yeah. It's always, man, entrepreneurship. The the people that really do figure it out, it's always such a blessing because you know one man's vision, one person's vision is, uh, you know, the impact it has and on the world is phenomenal, phenomenal. Mm -hmm. So the reason why I want to talk about uh, McDonald's because the founder of McDonald's in Canada, George Cohan, is dead mm. at 86 years old. 86, rest in peace, George. Yeah, so he was the one that brought McDonald's into Canada mm. before anybody even touched it. Mm. Wow, what a creation, eh? It's, what it's a amazing. Creation. You go from you go from this uh, Ray Kroc and his um, group of uh, lawyers and company owners and managers, whatever you want to call them, they go from opening up these locations in all across America, and then you have somebody like George that says, "Hey, give me a piece of this. Let's do some sort of franchising agreement up in Canada." Right. Then now they're catering to a Canadian market, mm -hmm. and then uh, how it expands and bubbles out is 
they've got locations on pretty much every single country in the world. Mm -hmm. Right. And because we talked about India, I want to talk about the Maharaja burger. They cater to the demographic. They obviously can't be cutting up cows and serving up beef because that's a, like in your religion, being a Hindu. Right. Right. It's it's pretty sacred. You can't be doing cows, but they've found ways to replace that one product, which is very popular in America, but they just found like potato and paneer to just replace it. And they've right. given up these like Amer- these uh, Indian names. Right. They're so good at that, like brand- branding. Like, What's they're that? like, we, we, you know, most companies go into a country and they're like, oh, we'll just keep everything the same as we always do. Yep. But these guys know that like, India is not the same clientele. And, you know, I guess they do their research and figure out, okay, what can we sell here? And then, yeah, the, you have the Mikalu Tiki burger and yep. the Maharaja burger. So, you know, McDonald's is... Uh, and their profits crazy like they're still profitable the fact that they're still in business this long and expanding still yep like what a what a company right what a business um i what do you think of when you think of mcdonald's man so many things come to mind the golden arches you got ronald yeah. McDonald. i see um over consumption for lack of quality i haven't eaten right. at mcdonald's in a long time i do like their apple pies right right uh, I do like trying apple pies at different fast food chains. Right. Got, got the apple turnover, a little bit crispier shell with the nice soft filling, and it's got cinnamon and sugar on top. Right. Then you got to go to McDonald's, which is a pie. It's like right. nice and soft with uh, sugar and icing on there. So, right. oh man, I'm just thinking nostalgia. about You're getting nostalgia. <laughs> I can see the nostalgia. I'm like <laughs> selling myself off on this something that I just yeah. don't want to eat. It's so bad for me. Yeah, the but, I I think about being a college student. I remember the McDouble and the juniors, and yeah, um, I remember all that. I think uh, you know from what I read and remember from Ray Kroc and McDonald's journey was the um, the system, right? They had the system that was really different. It yep. was like a streamlined kitchen system where like one person gets the patties, puts sauce, the next person puts the burger, and then it's done, right? They had the streamlined whatever they called it. Yeah. Um, that's really how they grew. They were able to deliver burgers faster. Um, I think about brand, like the whole Ronald McDonald, the clown, uh, place of joy, uh, play place. Like when you go to, when you're a kid, you go to McDonald's, you get to go in the slides and all that fun stuff. So they did a good job of, uh, you know, finding out their, their customers, who their customers were and branding to them. I, I think they've obviously done, done amazing, provided lots of jobs in Canada and America and around the world. Yeah, um, providing they jobs. Have and... um, they have different demographics, right? In the morning yeah. with the pancakes, the hash browns, and the egg McMuffin and the coffee. Adults, That's yeah. To adults. Right. And in the afternoon, they'll have different types of specials. And then in the late afternoon, when the schools are out, they'll have these like $1 ice cream cones. And yeah. What's their, what's their infamous meal called? Their yeah. infamous, uh, the Happy Meal. The Happy Meal. Yeah, the Happy Meal. <laughs> hey, do you remember when they used to serve pizzas? They did. They had they had pepperoni pizzas. And no they way. Pizzas. Yeah. I don't remember. I remember McRib burgers, but I don't remember pizzas. So the McRib. Did they serve burger- hot dogs ever? I feel like they would have tried hot, hot dogs. dogs. Not hot dogs. Not mm-hmm. hot dogs. The McRib burgers and these specialty kind of burgers, they do right. them for trial runs depending on what season it is. Right. Pizza, they had it, but because of the wait times, it would screw up the order system, and then it would have um the server that already has taken the order. They right. got to go back and they got to find the person and walk time, just all that stuff. So they just removed it. It's cool how right. they just keep innovating. Do you, the- okay. Do you think, do you think in the next five years that McDonald's is going to keep growing and, you know, keep expanding? I think so. Yeah. You know what? Where what about the- 10 years? Do you think 10 years? Oh, hundred percent. I think people are just getting lazier and lazier and it's so right. cost effective. Like the McDonald's and any fast food chain for a matter of fact. It's right. still so much cheaper than going to a restaurant or going out. People right are else, yeah. to, does it make sense to prepare your own food or should we just go to a fast food restaurant and just have our right. food? Right. I but, know I am when I when I really think about it, I think the next five years, 10 years for McDonald's are really, really good. I start thinking like 10 to 20 years. Hmm. And I do think there's going to be a strong uh, movement towards like healthier foods to uh to increase your lifespan it's actually started a couple of years ago with all yeah the- exactly like chipotle right chipotle's crushing it i don't know where to right 
So I, I see this movement towards like health conscious. So either, you know, I get, I would imagine a company like McDonald's will figure out the health conscious consumer and switch their products for them. But even Chick-fil-A, like Chick-fil-A tends to use like grilled chicken and just higher quality stuff. So yeah, I know. I think the next five, 10 years of McDonald's looks really good beyond that. If they pivot, I think they'll be okay. Yeah. Uh, I but think most we'll fast food joints are going to be fine. Yeah. Yeah. A lot, a lot of history with uh, McDonald's and they've done it. Just people stuff. want to stop grabbing and go. We're not cooking meals for like sure. we do. For sure. For sure. Or maybe they just take what they're doing and just improve the quality. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think right. there would be ever a big collaboration with McDonald's? They'll buy a different franchise, like a different, like huge. Uh, they, I mean, these companies always buy companies, right? Like, uh, I mean, McDonald's is known. I don't. I don't know if they bought another restaurant, but they've bought uh, like technology companies to streamline their whole process. Like I don't know, can't remember what it was, but yeah, they bought other companies before. Uh, yeah. Do they? Will they buy another restaurant? Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, t- I think Burger King King bought Tim Hortons, right? It was Burger King that bought it. I'm pretty that sure it was Burger King, King that bought Tim Hortons. Hortons. I know yeah. it was American that came to Canada. And was like I think, it was, I think it was Burger King. Was it? Yeah. So Burger King bought Tim Hortons. So yeah, I see, I I don't know which company they would buy, but I think it's possible for sure. I'm not going to lie. I don't think there's a single Canadian brand that's actually Canadian anymore. Oh, no, I don't think so either. All, Banks all, maybe? Banks? RBC is Canadian. No. Those are, but we're not. Yeah. That's boring though. Those are government yeah. organizations. Those are government companies. Yeah. yeah. We can't say much about those, man. They're getting bailed out all the time by the government too. <laughs> oh, bad. Just this and uh this and rbc and td actually i think td is american if i'm not mistaken toronto dominion Bank. i think they got bought out man i really do think they got bought out i can't remember the- i don't know this i should i feel like i need to know this. you should know this because you're, you're know this. you know you're in the real estate space so i'm just so busy looking at inflation and interest right. rates yeah right now it seems like everyone's preoccupied there everyone's preoccupied with that yeah but yeah man i think i'm gonna get to mcdonald's today <laughs> celebrate george what Just happened to your calories a legacy and of George? Huh? What happened to your calories and macros? Hey, remember my muscle? Starved myself, huh? Hey, you need to have a pronta. Like you, you're fine. Don't worry about your abs. Just have this one pronta, and you'll be Wait, fine. Wait, you're massy? Yeah, I'm the best. Yeah. You know when we were talking? Because she's like, uh, you were like, oh yeah, the girls. I'm like, bro, girls don't look at abs. Guys do. No, I was other guys would be like, nice abs. Other girls would be like, we don't care. I was saying, dude, eat your heart out, man. It's yeah, all. Yeah. Because I'm that type of way where I'll just eat whatever I want. It's it's hard for me to gain weight. Right. And you're like, I'm on this diet, man. All the macros. Yeah. Oh, Masi's like, mm, yo, macros, man. Put that in the garden. It's garbage. so nice. She likes yeah, the full pronta. And it was such a good pronta too, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's good. She's so nice, too. Yeah. She's so nice. Cool. What else we, we got? Took, we took selfies and everything. I think that's it, man. I think that's it for this week. Um, I got nothing else to share. You got anything else you want to touch on? No. I mean, I'll probably talk off air about the podcast. Yeah, we got a guest next week. Are we allowed to say the guest? Yeah, might as well. Yeah, go for it. It's the Wrestling Classics. I'm excited for that, man. I don't know what kind of memorabilia he's going to bring. If he's going to bring us any belts. Or if he's going to bring like the... Who was that? Uh, There was Owen Hart. And who was the other Hart brother? Uh, Bret Hart, Bret Hart, Bret Hart, man. If you bring us the Bret Hart jacket, the one that was all pink, right, guys. Yeah. Okay, so yo, real quickly, so wrestling classic. We're gonna have him next week. Um, I don't know the exact date yet, but we're we're working it out. In the comments below, if you made it this far into the video, you're a goat. We appreciate you listening this deep into this video. In the comments below, leave a comment. Uh, who your favorite wrestler of all time is. Um, your favorite wrestler of all time. We're gonna share ours. Karn, who's your favorite wrestler of all time? Oh, it's gotta be 316 Stone Cold Steve Seven. Austin <laughs> all day long. I don't know why. He was just such a badass. Yeah. He was That's a tough one, man. Movie. I liked I liked a lot of wrestlers, man. I I feel like he was the only favorite. one that wasn't playing a character. Yeah, Every actually I, he was on, I think uh Stone Cold was on uh wrestling uh classics podcast right he was he well was yeah. justin's justin's interviewed and so many different people right it's yeah, quite he's, interesting. he's gonna be a, a really interesting guest to have actually yeah. this, um this really who's, who's yours who's, who's my favorite man i i think i went through like phases like i, I liked ray mysterio savage. i liked ray mysterio for some period of time i liked uh 
The Rock, of course. Yeah. I like John Cena. Yep. Um, yeah, man, I, I like Triple Edge for a short period, but he was always kind of the bad guy. So I, there, was I, yeah. a, there was a time where he was the good guy. Yeah. Um, when they're beefing with like Batista was, and Randy Orton and all those guys. There's always these different eras like Stone Cold and Vince McMahon and Triple H and um I know the 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 Rock and who's Rock's biggest beef? Was it Randy Orton or was it Triple H? No, it wasn't. I don't think it was Randy Orton. I don't think it was. And Triple then there was H Undertaker either. and the Kane. Oh, yeah, the Kane. There's just so much, man. That's I don't watch it now, but I do the remember. I remember Wolfpack, NWO. Right. Uh, we had uh, Shawn Michaels at the kick. Yeah, yeah, the uh, the freaking Degeneration X. D D G yeah, Degeneration X. Uh, Rob Van Dam, you remember Rob Van Dam? Yeah, 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 yeah. Rob Van Dam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was just remember, like a uh, recipe. You remember uh, Eddie Guerrero? Yeah, yeah massa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you remember Chris Benoit? We had Kurt Angle. There was Goldust. Goldust was just you the yeah. You suck. Every time he would come in, everyone was just like booing him. <laughs> that lumberjack guy that would just carry like a two by four. He would stomp in and yeah. then he would get punched in the face once and he would just stomp right back out. And that was his entire kind of. That was what he did? That's all he know. did. Lumberjack guy? Yeah. I don't know. She Seamus? No, Seamus is more recent, I think. Uh, No, there was. Oh, uh, you remember uh, Mick Foley? You the sock the, the guy? Remember the guy would put on a sock? Yeah, yeah, that was McFoley, I think. McFoley, right? He yeah. had another name too. I can't remember his other name, but yeah, McFoley. Had a couple different personas. Yeah, Undertaker was mankind. Great. I think it was mankind. 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 Uh, yeah. Man, we're gonna we're gonna be here for another hour talking about wrestling. But yeah, no, I think we should save this for the next podcast. But yeah, guys, if, you know, whoever your favorite wrestler is, leave it in the comment. Um, is there anything else you want to say, or can I wrap it up? No, wrap it up, man. Bring it home. Yeah, so yeah, leave your favorite wrestler in the comment. Guys, if you made it this far and you're liking this uh, week by week live video that we're doing, um, if you want us to keep doing it, you gotta you gotta tell us. You gotta like the like the video, subscribe to our channel, you gotta support us, you know. We're not asking for money. I mean, if you want to give me money, you can. But <laughs> no, we need lights in the background. He needs we just want your support. I think uh, the likes is more for engagement because the more you engage, the more it spreads and other people talk about it. We do yeah. this because we actually enjoy it. Like, I would probably do it even if you didn't like it. So it doesn't really matter. I'll still make these. If you don't like it, I'll still make these. But, yeah. you know, I think if you do like it, like, show us some love. DM us. Why do you got to wait till you see me in person to tell me you like my content? Why I you got to? People seem to be like, dude, I love your video. I'm like, you never commented. You never, never liked commented. it. You never said you anything. Subscribe. And he said, and they, they're specifically, they talk about different moments with, no, the they, it's, cr there's, they're like full on, like full on watching. I got someone that like talked about three, four different videos. I'm like, at least hit, hit a goddamn subscribe. Yeah. Or just like message me and be like, Hey, this was good. Maybe this was bad. I'm okay. Uh, yeah, that too. Altar. That too. Feedback, <laughs> feedback always helps for sure. Feedback is great. I, I'll thrive on that man all day long. Right. Cool. Rahul. All right. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. I'll see you, see in, you in the next one. Peace. Sure.